Hey guys, <clears throat> um, I figured I'm getting ready for more Dovapod shows right now, so I figured I could kill two birds with one stone. <clears throat> and for anybody who's interested, show them a couple Dovapod guitar riffs that um, that I've been asked about in the past, which is so cool that anybody even thinks to. So I'm gonna start it off. Uh, with sort of the main riff from our song, Volume 3, Number 86. Uh, I'll show you how to play the riff. I tabbed it out and everything for you. And uh, maybe I'll play it slow and then talk about how the song was written a little bit. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Shit, two, three, four. Minus the shit part where I restarted. Um, but let's play that a little slower. So that was just the same thing twice in a row, and then after the second time, I ended on a D flat minor chord. But um, as far as like maybe like melodically or harmonically what's going on, uh, I would say don't worry about it too much. It's kind of just out. I'd say more than anything, it's kind of centered around maybe like maybe an F7 a little bit to my mind. Like visually, it looks like looks like something that I would play around like an F7 box. But um, I wouldn't think too deeply into it other than that. So here it is just slowly. tabs will give you everything you need just learn it if you want or don't but um maybe more importantly is just i guess this is turning into a songwriting story which uh i always like those because i feel like realistically what do you need to know how to play volume 386 for only i need to know how to play it at the end of the day but uh i feel like for songwriting advice usually the best i can do is just tell people about other examples of songwriting situations i found myself in over the years and this is one of them um, so this song was musically pretty much 100% written by Eli, our keyboardist. He made a demo in like Logic and he sent it to all of us and we all listened to it and learned our parts. We used to like, when we would meet up for rehearsals, we would all go to separate, we would show up at like his house and he'd be like, here's the song I want to work on. And we would all go into different rooms and learn our parts. Uh, we never ever wrote anything down. Um, he would just make a demo and we would all learn our parts by ear and like change things that, that we kind of wanted changed on our instrument. Um, and most of the time, um, a lot of changes would happen to the demo arranging wise. Sometimes the, we, the demo was like, we were all so happy with it. We pretty much just learned it and left it alone. I don't think this is one of those. Um, I think it just sort of, it was almost like two demos because there's that part where it goes, uh, and we all stop and then a completely new tempo gets counted off for like a jam. And I think what happened there was like that section was not rubato. It didn't slow down. In the demo, it just played that little passage and then stopped, and it's almost like a new demo when the same track started. And we were just like, to hell with it, let's make it one song. And um, there you have it, you know? And then I know we decided at the end we wanted to bring back, even though we were at a much faster tempo, because then it turns into this. <laughs> Fast 
faster kind of like un c4 on the floor tempo and just to tie the room together and we knew at the end that we wanted to go back into two three four <laughs> go into that same part again but faster and then we also said what the hell man we love this part from earlier why don't we combine the two so the very end of the tune is the same intro i just showed you but we combine it with this thing from later on which i didn't show you today but i'm just talking about arranging decisions that were made at this point so so it went and then right so we kind of glued two ideas together and made one long passage out of it and that was really fun because it was kind of hard to play it's a little fast and, <laughs> and then um i know one thing that like with that intro riff that I showed you guys was that Eli drew from a Yes song. That's sort of where he was inspired by it, like really heavily too. It's like, it's almost like a nod to them, I think. Um, and I can't remember which tune because I'm not really a Yes specialist. One of you out there probably knows. But he it was he wasn't trying to hide it or anything. He was just like, man, I want to write something that's, that's like, I want to write like my homage to Yes, kind of. Uh, and then lyrically, I gotta be honest, I think this was our first song we ever attempted to write lyrics for. So I still listen to them now and I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? Did we really think those lyrics were a good idea? But I also legitimately think you gotta start somewhere and maybe that was just the best we were possibly gonna do right then. So, you know what I mean? Um, and the way it worked with writing lyrics for that song was that the melody and everything, I think, was there already. And maybe not in the, tell me what's the difference from a child and an adult, just acting like the former you results. That one we might have come up with a melody to go on top of like a groove that was in the demo. But, um, then the other lyrics, these ones. I first met you across the border. Tired, stale, hungover. That part, I definitely, like Eli had the melody in the demo and I just wrote lyrics uh, using the melody, which I always find is kind of um, a stress relief with writing lyrics because it limits what your options are. You're like, okay, well, the melody has this many notes in it, so I need a word that has that same amount of syllables. It just narrows down um, what my options are, so I have to make decisions. I kind of like that. At least I used to. Maybe it's different now. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of become, like, one of probably our, like, sort of, like, go-to kind of like set closers or openers. And um, we still really enjoy playing it. And I also just remember thinking that the song was so weird and so like the arrangement was so, you know, frenetic and kind of ADD and all over the place that the first day we debuted songs with lyrics, we tried it and we played it and we were nervous about having lyrics in our music anyways because our first two albums were totally instrumental. We were like known as an instrumental band. But we were getting bored, so we were just like, we want to write lyrics, you know. And um, I think we played this song like one time and we're like, you know what, maybe we, should just, maybe we should shelve this one for a little bit. Like, I think it might be a little too weird and we need to work on it. And then we were like, you know what, let's play it tonight. It was in Boston. I remember being at the Middle East downstairs in Boston and Chuck and I were like eating dinner at the bar upstairs and having that discussion. We were like, yeah, maybe we should shelve it. And then by the end of dinner, we were like, you know what, let's just play it. Who cares? We need more songs. Let's just play it one more time and then we'll keep working on it. And I just remember like the crowd freaked out when we played it and we decided like, just don't even touch it. We'll leave it alone. 
Um, so it's been the same pretty much ever since, uh, except for like improvising, you know? Um, and if anybody can figure out where the name comes from, I'll be very proud of you. Ah, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Someday somebody will find it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's volume three, number 86. That's the riff again. Let's play it slow one more time. Two, three, four. <laughs> It's really hard to play your songs slow. It's very hard. Um, but anyways, uh, enjoy. I'm going to do a couple more of these because um, that's what I'm working on right now, getting ready for shows, playing over songs. So kill two birds with one stone. More on the way. See you guys soon. Bye.